Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. Today, I'm gonna to give you my top five reasons why I think the 2022 DRZ 400 is going to be the last of the DRZs as we currently know it. Stay tuned. Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. And if you like what you see on my stuff, please like and subscribe to my channel. Anyway, without further ado, my top five reasons why I think the DRZ is going the way of the Dodo in its current configuration. Okay, reason number five. The DRZ, it's been around seemingly forever, since the year 2000. So take a look at this thing here. So we've got the DRZ in its current state. Here's the DRZ 400S model. And then over here, we have the DRZ 400 Supermoto version. Now, if we go to Google, guys, and we type in just DRZ 400 without any particular year, it all looks pretty much the same. It's been done. We've been talking about it for years. I think it's time. How many times do we have to say it, Suzuki? We want a newer version. Okay, so let's talk about reason number four. I believe the DRZ is going away. Emissions and safety. Emission laws are getting way more restrictive and the DRZ is grandfathered in right now, but there's no way that it's going to keep lasting like this. And it's not just in the United States. The European emission laws are becoming more stricter too. It's going on all over the place. And you can't tell me Suzuki doesn't know this. All the other manufacturers are putting out fuel injected bikes and updating. Suzuki knows it's time. In addition to that, we also have some safety laws getting updated. Australia has implemented a new anti-lock brake system kind of law. We've got a website of a dealer in Australia, Motorcycles Are Us. Here's the Supermoto version. And we have this. Has this model been discontinued? Yes, because incoming ABS laws will prevent this model from being available. So this was it. I heard they even shipped some extra over just so people could buy these in Australia because it's the last year that they're being offered. Guys, this is not a good sign for Suzuki. They're going to lose a big market because of not having ABS. So let's talk about number three. Number three is Honda. Yes. Honda and specifically let's take a look here the Honda CRF 450 L so when this came out a couple years ago this was a big hit there was a lot of people I know personally who had Suzuki DRZs who dropped them and went right for this bike and while there's an argument that it does cost a heck of a lot more if you take a look here the base MSRP on this bike is 10 grand pretty much and by the time you get that tax and tags out the doors price, you're well into KTM Husqvarna kind of pricing. Honda also this year put out their 300L. So let's take a peek at this thing here. So this 300L from Honda has a price tag under the DRZ. And yes, I understand. It's underpowered compared to the DRZ, so you have that argument. But... It's still a modern fuel injected dual sport, what the DRZ is not. So Honda has two bikes in their lineup now that are modern dual sports and DRZ still running with what they've had for over 20 years. It's time. It's time for DRZ to step it up. So that brings me to my second reason and that's Kawasaki. Yeah, I actually put Kawasaki in front of Honda in this. Now, while Kawasaki doesn't offer the bike similar to like a CR450L, they still offer a dual sport and they jacked that up to a 300 recently. They also introduced a supermoto version. Yes, so now they're almost in direct competition with Suzuki on their lineup. Now, yes, I know it's a 300, so it's still got less power than the DRZ. That doesn't mean anything to some people though. They go into a shop, they see a lower price tag and they see a dual sport and they see a supermoto. Well, they're going to look at the price tag and probably just go for the cheaper 
bike. And it's a newer bike because it's got the fuel injected. So the moment they start seeing this stuff, why would they even think about buying a DRZ unless they really have something that like I have to have that. So Kawasaki definitely is going to put a dent in Suzuki's sales. So now we have two manufacturers that are offering modern dual sports and Suzuki's still hanging on. It's time guys, time to move on. And now for my number one reason. Have you guys seen the 2022 models yet? Take a look at this. So we've got the 2022 Supermoto. Take a look at this picture. And here's the 2022 S. Take a look at this picture. Now that's 2022 guys, watch this. 2021, oh, let's go take a look at the S model. 2021, oh. It looks like the same bike, doesn't it? It looks like the same exact bike. For the first time that I could find in any of my research, Suzuki is using the same plastics. The same plastics. The one thing that we at least could look forward to in the new model of the DRZ was bold new graphics. And now we don't even have that. They're selling the same bike two years in a row. So now I don't know if this is just a pandemic thing and they have a lot of supply of certain things left over and they just want to get rid of it or if they really just want to get rid of everything because after 2022, the new model's coming. And that's what I think. I think they just want to get rid of all the stock that they have and they know it's time and let's get it all done. Let's get it all sold and start fresh in 2023. And that is my number one reason. They aren't even trying anymore. <laughs> they know it's time. So guess what guys, 2023 is my prediction for a modern DRZ. So I'm gonna leave you guys with a question that I want you guys to put answers to in the comments below. What do you think they're going to do for 2023? Are we really going to just get another version of the same thing with bold new graphics? Or like me, do you think 2023 is going to bring that new modern fuel injected DRZ to the world? What do you think? Again, comment below. Thanks for watching another episode of Helmets, Handlebars, and High Sides. Guys, if you like what you've been seeing, please like and subscribe to my channel and I will catch you next time.